What's up, everybody? My name is Anthony Irvin. You beat yourself? Yeah. Yeah, see me myself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh. I'm Jim Green. <laughs> Don't even leave that hit of <laughs> traffic light. <laughs> okay, good. Welcome to One Set. Have you ever wanted to start your podcast but didn't know where to start? The One Set Bros are here to talk to you about Zencaster. Zencaster is the ultimate based podcasting solution and now the only one podcasting platform making podcasting easy. They've sure made it easy for us to be able to record our podcast and our episodes every week for you guys. Once you've set up your account, you're simply one click away from recording a high quality podcast with studio quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. My personal favorite feature is their multi-layer backups, which ensure our recordings are always in the highest quality, even during unstable web connections. And if you thought you needed multiple tools and services for your podcast, Zencaster's only one podcasting platform allows you to create your podcast all in one place and distribute to Spotify, Apple, and other major destinations. Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use our code one set pod and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experience as we do with all our podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode of the one set podcast. My name is Anthony Irvin and Jim green this week is absent from the podcast uh he's taking a taking a week off so i'm gonna be doing a solo episode this week uh you know we're in the middle of some transitional periods from getting our uh fall schedules in line so he is taking the week to get his fall schedule all put together and be ready for his class classes that'll be starting at the time of this podcast uh coming out uh, a lot of our schedules will be uh, already started. So, uh, you know, Jim is hard, hard at work. So we're proud of the work that he's doing. So he'll be back on the next episode with us. So I've got a couple things uh, I wanted to kind of talk about. And, you know, on my end that, uh, you know, I've been working on in the background. And I, in the one of the recent podcasts, I was talking about uh, a show that I couldn't uh, really talk about, but since that podcast has came out, now I can talk about it. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. I'm really excited to actually play that. Uh, but since this is a little bit outdated from the Memorial Day weekend, I won't talk too much about uh, what went down since it's a little bit outdated. But, uh, you know, Grayson, my youngest, uh, ended up getting sick. So we usually go up to the mountains for the Memorial Day weekend, but we weren't able to do that. So we stayed back and did like the whole house thing. I haven't been home for, uh, you know, actually not Memorial Day, uh, Labor Day weekend. Uh, excuse me. So uh, I haven't been home for Labor Day weekend uh, in a couple of years. So it, it felt weird. Uh, you know, because we're so used to traveling, but it felt good to kind of just, you know, be back and relax. Uh, that Saturday, we took Anthony to the shore, the Jersey Shore, just to get him out. So he had a fun time. Me and him were out in the water. He loves being in the water, which is awesome because I love being in the ocean water, just uh, boogie boarding and just, you know, catching the waves, just, uh, you know, letting the waves crash into you. And so it's always been fun for me. I've always loved being in, in, in the ocean, uh, when at the shore and, uh, you know, my wife is not much of a, sh uh, an ocean person. She'll, so she'll stay on shore, uh, you know, do her thing. And, you know, she, she'll, you know, go in every once in a while, but she does not go in the water that often. Uh, so it it was cool to have those dad moments with uh Anthony and we did a little bit of fishing and he uh on that Monday in our area so he he was dying to go fishing cuz we were going to go fishing up in the mountains when we were up there with uh you know a couple of uh Jen's family members but since we weren't able to go uh you know we just you know did a plan B and did a little bit of fishing on the actual Labor Day day itself. And uh, 
the night before that, we were able to catch some fireworks from our house. So uh, I think that was maybe one of the first times as a family we caught uh, you know, fam- uh, fireworks with Anth. Uh, Grayson was already passed out, so uh, he might take about another year or two to see some fireworks. But uh, he he was happy to see them. Uh, you know, at first we couldn't find them, uh, you know, because usually you can see it out at a distance right from our house if you actually don't go to the area but you can usually see them you know over the horizon of a couple uh houses so it was cool so you you didn't actually have to go to the area to see you can actually see it from your house which is always really nice so he, he enjoyed that and uh you know back to a little bit of the the fishing time that we were uh going to we i took him to a new spot over at a local pond that we have in our area and uh it's not a spot that i go to very often i usually take him to chester creek which is right down the road from us and obviously with the pond you have to pay to go over to the pond and do everything so that's something that i don't you know do that often uh i'll just you know take him right to the creek we'll catch some bluegill sunnies and he he's happy as a clam as long as he's catching something you know so and and i try to you know give him my two cents of knowledge that my dad used to teach us when me and my brother used to go out with him you know trying to just you know uh give him some pointers of being safe don't go uh you know running around the water you know because there's a couple spots where you have to be you know a little safe uh so i i try to give him the pointers that my dad kind of put in with me and my brother so it's kind of cool to be the dad role that my dad was in and kind of you know living that uh you know kind of you know now you're in that different type of role in in that type of seat so it's 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 cool to you know teach your son values that your parents instilled in you and then kind of keep passing it down so i mean that's i think that's everything that you know our parents want us to do is you know uh hopefully learn take something and learn it so that you can hopefully teach your kids the same and then hopefully that cycle continues that hopefully anthony and grayson will uh you know one day take the values and the things that we taught them and teach it to their kids and then vice versa so uh it's just cool to kind of see the full circle coming with that and you know just he the the little things that he's starting to get into you know we i've talked about the monster truck thing with him and you know he he's starting to get into wrestling which is cool uh you know i let him watch you know the money Night rolls and the pay-per-views here and there but i try to you know since he's still at a young young age i try to tell him uh you know hey no wrestling at school no you know rough play with your friends too much you know boys will be boys right but you know i don't i don't want to see him like drop kicking a dude <laughs> drop kicking one of his friends uh at school or something so you, uh even though i i let him watch every once in a while i still try to tell him every time we're watching saying like hey what's happening here is these guys are professionals and they're doing it and they go back and you know you gotta you know kid it up a little bit they go back and they hug it out you know so this is all just uh you know a a scene so they're not all uh mad at each other so you this is something you don't do and you and me can you know wrestle here and there but i don't want you to be doing that with your friends so uh he's been doing good so i think that's kind of been clicking that he he can't do it at school but you know when he and I are watching wrestling and, you know, just having fun. He'll, he'll, we'll play wrestle and do all that. I, I, I gotta <laughs> tell you a funny thing that he did and it still cracks me up. So we're watching, uh, the latest bash in Berlin, uh, over the weekend. And this will show you how a little bit outdated we are, but, uh, we were watching bash in Berlin and, uh, well, I watched it two days after the actual day it was, but either way. So he sees a SmackDown ad since SmackDown is, uh, you know, going to USA. And I think when this podcast comes out, it might be the first one. Uh, if not, it's coming soon. But uh, he saw this, uh, the SmackDown ad and he doesn't know, you know, the names of the TV shows. He just knows wrestling. So uh, he says, oh, SmackDown? 
what like this and out of nowhere he just smacks me across the face and i had no clue what he was about that <laughs> he was about to do that and it just you you ever get hit or like smacked and it just takes you by uh surprise and you just take two seconds or three seconds to be like what just happened your brain's just trying to process what just happened and i just started dying laughing and he, and he just starts dying laughing and we just start cracking up together and and now he he just tries to continue to slap me in the face but i'm telling him, hey no but it was so funny he just like oh smackdown what like this bam he just levels me in the face <laughs> so i had to give give him kudos for at least landing it and and putting a good joke on on old dad so um uh, that that was pretty funny i th- i think i will continue to tell that joke for a little while while that uh sits in my brain it's going to be something that's like one of those things like wow i can't believe that happened but it i just laugh at it so much now it's so funny i uh, you know yeah I, I i enjoyed you know having the little time uh l- little moments and little times that uh i get with anth and and i can't wait to have those moments of grayson too uh because you know he, he's you know just about to turn eight months uh and if when this again when this podcast comes out he might already be eight months uh you know he, he's still little so he's not really you know there yet with comprehending what's going on uh you know probably this time next year uh you know since he'll be walking and you know trying to start talking a little bit here and there he's definitely developing a lot faster than what anthony was at at his age i feel so it's it's also fun to see you know the comparisons of how grayson is and then anthony with you know at their different stages of their you know uh lives and how where anthony was compared to what grayson is doing right now it's it's fun to see that and you know i i'm just starting to you know not that i haven't had a relationship with him but you know i'm just starting to continue to build that bond with grayson you know and anthony obviously is always going to be the uh, and i'm sure parents can say this their firstborn is always going to have that special thing to them it's the their firstborn it's the one that made them a parent it's they're always going to have that special thing with with that firstborn child but you know now getting, getting into baby number two and uh you know i'm just starting to really uh get into that connection with him and doing little things with grayson that i don't necessarily uh obviously can't do with uh anthony right now since he's uh not a baby so you have that like baby talk and baby lingo that you do with uh grayson and then i have my things with anthony so it's uh cool to you know i'm starting to have these two different relationships with them and you know building you know those dad things with him so i'm looking forward to you know seeing how me and grayson you know build up is uh grayson gonna you know be uh into fishing is he gonna be into you know sports and stuff but i i think he's gonna be that typical younger brother whatever anthony's doing grayson's gonna try to uh you know be right next to anthony because he's he's almost acting like that right now every, every time he sees anthony puts on the biggest smile so the, their connection has grown even more over the last couple months too and it's it, it's wonderful to see that so i i just continue to hope and pray that they continue to you know form their bond as brothers and never let that go and yeah it's uh you know dad moments you know so can't can't get enough of them and to all, all my dads and you know parents that are out there uh, i'm sure you guys can agree on this so um yeah with, with that uh so i'll get into the gig that i was going to be talking about in that i mentioned in one of the past podcasts and so in my area of delaware county uh in media pa they're going to be doing their first porch fest so i think westchester has been doing a couple porch fests over the last couple years but media uh this is their first time attempting it so uh 
I'm honored to say that I'm going to be participating in their first porch fest. So for anybody who is out of the, you know, county or doesn't know essentially what a porch fest is, I'm still kind of getting uh the knowledge and lingo of what it is but i I pretty much know the base because i've seen pictures and seen little things but if there's any other meanings feel free whoever's watching this you know give a better meaning than what i do but uh in the essence of what a porch fest is uh it's basically when people host their homes their their porch or their front yards and they allow musicians artists to perform uh outside their house on their porch or on their driveway front yard and to a live audience and obviously the barrow has to approve of this and everything so then now what media is doing is they're having a bunch of like i think about 19 to 20 different locations around the uh heart of media so I think there's about 40 artists, uh, you know, bands, solo artists, duos, everything inclu- included within that 40. And they're all going to be playing within these, you know, 20 locations. Now, the location I'm playing at, uh, I'll list in the uh, descriptions or you can check my website. And uh, so it's going to be me and this other band. So uh, it's cool. There's only really me and another band. So there's not really much, uh, you know, you can look forward to, you know, just two different people. And, uh, you know, there's other ones that have multiple artists or bands playing on their locations. I'm not sure why they only put me in another uh, band, maybe because of the fact that uh, I'm trying to do live looping. So maybe they figure I'm going to need a little bit more time to set up. So having me set up with a bunch of solo artists, I have a lot more equipment and it would be harder for me to uh, set up and break down in time in order for another uh, artist to come up. So maybe I guess they were thinking of that, but my plan with this is to debut my new live rig setup. And I, I want to show you guys a picture so much, but uh, I'm still working out the kinks with it and I'm still getting pieces of small little bits of gear. I think at this moment, I can say most of the main pieces of gear from this has been uh, bought and I'm just waiting for a couple things to come in and I have a few more things that I just got to purchase, but a lot of the main pieces of gear in order for me to uh, write and start, you know, getting these songs put together from this new rig has been uh, bought. So I can start making, uh, you know, these songs up and start practicing with this new gig as of right now. So it's it's really cool to do that. And uh, I, I got to give a lot of credit to a couple live loopers that inspired me to do this. And uh, I'll name it right now. So, uh, the first one that really inspired me was this uh, live looper out of Nashville. He was, and I've talked to him on, uh, about him on the pod. Uh, he's from Nashville, uh, originally from Australia. His name is uh, Carl Walkner. I'll give a little, you know, description of him, uh, his info uh, right down here and in the description of the videos. Uh, he is a live looper, again, out of Nashville, and he basically does everything on the fly so whatever you hear from him it's basically no backing tracks no you know any instances of backing tracks or pre-made stuff and it's all just done right on the spot so and what his i think what his uh typical thing is is doing mashups so he does uh shows in nashville and he he does a specific type of show i feel every once in a while where he'll get requests from the audience and uh they'll give him two different artists and he has to make a song from those two artists which i think is talented as hell it's uh i i wish i had that amount of talent to just on the fly say take two different artists or two bands or a band or an artist and you know mash up two of their songs and try to make it work right off the bat, right off the cuff. And, you know, that's a special talent. So uh, I, I, if, if I need, and you would like, I'll put another link 
under his and give you one of my favorite mashups that uh he recorded live in his studio uh it's a mashup of uh tom petty's free falling and a song called and another song called ghost i think it's by uh justin bieber i might be wrong if so i'll i'll edit what the actual uh song artist is from that but i believe it's justin bieber so it, it's a awesome cover uh and mashup of two songs so another artist and this is the artist that really got me clicking to be like hey this is what i need to start like i feel this is the next level of what my live looping needs to be and so i, I gotta give a shout out to bren social and uh he he, go, he goes by bren but on social media he's bren social so uh he uh does live music out of canada and he is a full-time musician from canada running all around uh you know his area i think he resides in ontario or around ontario uh i'll give a link to uh his website or socials so you guys can check him out great talented artist uh and what he does is he's another live looper and he does uh i can't really say they're backing tracks because they're uh, they're more pre-made saved tracks that he makes and saves them for certain songs uh especially if a song has like a change either if so he has like a full uh not necessarily a full like a half electronic drum kit and then a piano and then he plays uh he has a looper board and his guitar so everything is done again right on the spot live however there are some songs where he has and he clicks on uh pre-made tracks but they're all done by him they're nothing that he you know goes online and tries to search for a certain backing track all the backing tracks are made by him so i thought that was very unique and something that when i was trying to upgrade my looper board uh I ran into his page because I was looking at and trying to find things on the head rush looper board and his uh, YouTube page came up and I just started watching some of his lives and I started noticing that some of the songs uh, were having different changes in them and I couldn't first find out how he was doing that without looping them and I was like he's putting backing tracks in these somehow but then i realized after for I, I was like for days uh trying to figure out what he was doing and uh that's something about me i'm a very big cause and effect guy if i can't figure something out i will be so gun ho to try to figure out what's going on and i think that's like the science part of me that is always like trying to figure out things until i solve them so i was you know destined to figure out how this kid was uh you know adding in tracks that he didn't loop in the beginning of his songs i knew they were you know backing track-esque type of things and uh they were you know coming from what he was playing but i'm like how is he doing it without looping it so long story short i found out and he kind of you know I, I found out through when he messed up and all live loopers have some type of thing you know they they mess up or they kind of show their you know secret a little bit sometimes uh if you, i guess you can call it a, if you can call it a secret but i i guess you could say i found out his secret so he was making pre-made tracks on some of the songs so that and he has them on a specific track of that looper so the the looper that i now have is the head rush looper board so it has four tr uh looping tracks to it so what he does in certain songs if there's a change like uh say there is uh, a change where that's a little bit softer in the verses and then the chorus is very big in the and the and the guitars and the um and the drums change the the drums get more aggressive and in the ver verse they get a little smaller he will you know pre-make 
the chorus that may be bigger and uh, it might put on like track three and then track two might be the verse, but he'll loop the verse or he'll loop the main section of that song and he'll build it out. And then if there's a certain different part of the song, he'll already have that uh, pre-made. So all you, have to, all you have to do when that part of the song hits, he clicks on that track. So I thought that was, again, very interesting Well, as well, because now there's so many different possibilities of songs that you can do. And it's essentially getting into the one man band type of ask uh thing and i uh, this gives me so many more ideas instead of me just picking songs that i can have one beat for and you know one set of chords for or clicking off the the drum track that i do because the the drum beat doesn't uh go with the chorus or ask it doesn't go with the verse so i click off certain things when i don't need them for certain now I can pre-make certain things. So if the chorus does have a change, I can necessarily pre-make that and set it on a certain track, loop another part of the song to get that song going. And when that song, that part of the song, that's a change in it, I can just click that, uh, that track on right there and keep on going. So uh, again, I'll give Bren's, information down in the description you guys can check him out uh give him a follow give all these guys a follow that i'm about to be uh talking i got one more that i'm gonna be talking about but yeah definitely give these guys a follow because they're amazing amazing artists uh the last guy and i've been seeing this guy for a couple years but i have yet i didn't really pay attention to him i knew he was a live looper but I didn't really pay attention to him much until after I started watching Bren. And this guy is named Matt Bolton. And after watching a couple of his live shows, I was instantly inspired again by how this guy does his tracks. So this guy has, again, just like uh, Carl, he does no backing tracks, no pre-made tracks at all. Everything is done li live and on the spot. So what uh, Matt Bolton, he uses a piano and instead of an electronic drum kit, he just has a drum pad. So he can actually, you know, change up a couple of the um, the drum beats live. So for him, he doesn't necessarily have to pre-made pre-make any type of live uh looping things and i think both bren and matt are wonderful i don't think there's uh anything wrong with having pre-saved tracks uh i think it's even it sounds even better when it's done by you instead of uh some you having to go online and find a backing track that fits with that song because then you know it doesn't fit uh, it because you might be having something that sounds totally different, then the audience is going to know, okay, this is uh, either a backing track or something way different than what you're playing. So, to make a pre made loop and you know, essentially making it yourself, it's almost like you're playing your with yourself anyway because you're playing uh, the track, it's just already pre made, ready to go for you instead of looping it. Uh, on the spot and i think it saves time because especially as a live looper uh a lot of the thing is to try to not really take a lot of time looping a song and try to get to the 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 first you know verse as quickly as possible so my last couple shows i've really been uh focusing on that and trying to cut down the time that i'm looping my songs uh trying to really uh take one take or if i'm you know looping a drum part a guitar part and bass i'm trying to you know not stop the loop and unless i have to change over certain effects uh you know just trying to cut down the amount of time it takes me to build a loop if i can you know do three and four different uh layers in under a minute that's one minute uh that people don't have to worry about and it gets right into the song so that's something uh 
I feel that with Bren's version and like even all of them, I uh, you don't necessarily have to worry about I uh, you know boring your audience with trying to be like oh, okay well this is a change i gotta loop more stuff i gotta loop more stuff uh again because the point is to keep your audience engaged so uh i feel matt is doing something very inspiring as well and uh the way that he is able to uh certain songs and there's certain songs that i uh, he did that matt does he does uh shine on you crazy diamond by uh pink floyd when he hit the main riff of that, I'm like, he is not going to attempt this like, like live, no back and drag, no, no pre-made stuff. And he did. I was like, wow, I, I was watching on my phone and I was just giving him a clap. So that, that was awesome. And there's a couple songs again, just from now that I've been watching a lot of his lives, uh, I've been seeing a lot of his repertoire uh, of songs and I'm like, wow, that's interesting. So I, you know, I'm sure a lot of live loopers, we what we mean, we watch a lot of uh, other live loopers and we get inspired and we I mean, not necessarily steal, but we probably, you know, take a little bit of inspiration and ideas from each other. But uh, it, it'll now definitely give me ideas of how I want to run my setup and how I want my tone to feel. The only thing is, uh, and I think I forgot to mention, I'm not sure, uh, Matt Bolton, he resides in California. I I forget where in California. Again, it'll be all in the description. But uh, yeah, so he, he resides in California. And uh, it, it, it just goes to show that, you know, all three of these loopers kind of do some of the same songs, but then they also have songs that are specific to their location where uh bren i think his range of audience is kind of almost around my age where he's playing a lot of upbeat dance and uh you know classic rock pop and something that's going to make you get up and dance and everything uh matt bolton he has some dance tunes but he is more of a laid-back older crowd type of live looper and that is cool to me too because I, I love the mellow uh tunes i and that's a, a lot of what i play now I, I don't really have too many dance tunes but again with this setup i want to now have more upbeat stuff so i can eventually you know maybe get booked for better venues that have a dance crowd then i can you know be able to say hey uh if there's venues looking for artists that you know have more of an upbeat dancey type of tune i could be like hey i i have that type of tune let's go now for right now i feel i i'm not ready for that so i i don't usually try to you know say like oh i can do it but i don't really have like a certain amount of time that i can uh you know have a lot of upbeat music for so uh, I think this new setup is giving me a, a lot of inspiration and new challenges. It's definitely uh, with that. So my setup, I already had an electronic drum kit uh, from my studio. So I just kind of repaired a couple things and used only the parts of the, the electronic drum kit that I'm going to need. And then also I bought myself a, pia a piano. I don't know how to play. I don't know how to play piano, but I'm taking on the challenge of trying to learn certain things. I know how to play minor and major chords, but songs, I don't know any necessarily songs on piano. So uh, I was just noodling around with a couple things here and there. So I've learned a couple things in the last couple of weeks. And now it's giving me the confidence to be like, okay, at least I know I could play piano. And the piano is not going to be a main feature in every song but the drums just like now uh guitar vocal and drums are going to be the main hub of almost every song that i do and the piano is gonna you know unless there's a piano specific song the piano will be there to fill out some things for certain songs and some songs that may not even have piano i feel it'd be cool to add it and just add it as like a background filler to kind of fill out some space because again uh I'm looking to be a one-man band. And that's the thing around here in Delaware County. 
there's not many, if not only me or two or three guys that are doing something like that. There's people that are looping and using loopers, but nothing on the level that I'm about to start doing. So I feel that separates me from a lot of the people in my community where I'm hoping this gives me more gigs and hopefully this will land me into, you know, uh, scheduling some private events and maybe even uh, landing some, you know, weddings eventually next year. I, I, I have a lot of big ideas once I get this going and start building out like a full three, four hour set. I'm going to try, I'm trying to build out at least a one hour set right now. And then, you know, throughout the night, just kind of feature certain things. So uh, that is my, you know, main source of what I'm trying to do right now. So I'm very stoked to get this new thing out here. And it, it's just once I get it going, uh, my whole social media stuff is going to change now, I feel, because it's going to be centered towards a lot of live looping stuff. I feel I don't even though I consider myself a live looper, I don't put out a lot of live looping content. I've tried to put out a, a little bit of content here and there over the last week or two with my live looping stuff. But now once I get this set up, uh, my main social thing is going to be just putting out content of me using this rig and showing the certain songs that I can play. And then hopefully with that, it'll start sparking people around the area and surrounding to say, Hey, this guy's doing something cool. I want to, I want to, you know, book him at my place or, Hey, I, I just saw this guy at a local bar. He would be cool at my, uh, so-and-so's birthday party or a private event. So again, I have a lot of, you know, hope and you know good things that are going to come out of this so you know i always look forward to challenging my challenging myself when when needed to and i feel the piano is going to be something that is going to be you know a challenge but i'm willing to face the challenge and uh, because i've always wanted to learn how to play piano and i've always said for years i want to learn how to play i want to learn how to play now i've just never picked it up i wish i always did this is giving me the opportunity to say, Hey, pick it up, go get something, start learning. And that's what I did. I, you know, and, and I didn't spend a lot of money on it. Cause I knew I didn't want to put a whole bunch of money down on a piano, on a, uh, a keyboard, keyboard piano, if I really wasn't going to dig it too much. So I, I, I got a uh, Casio, uh, C K or CTS 300 for any musicians that are out there. So it's, it's a decent starter uh, keyboard, but the sounds on it are amazing. I think they're really nice. And there are uh, two or three upgrades from this one. And those are really great too. And, but I, again, I wanted to start off small and just get the learning part of it done. And I feel as I get better, I'll upgrade to a, uh, a bigger version or, you know, a different brand or whatever. So I feel as long as I can get my, my feet wet with learning how to play and, you know, get my, you know, songs in and uh, the confidence to do it, that's going to be the biggest thing is just uh, having the confidence to be able to play it in front of people and, you know, just get my finger dexterity, like to the point where I know I can play it without even thinking of it. So, uh, and I feel once I get that down, uh, I can start upgrading eventually. So, and I can always use, and this is an, another thing. If I do upgrade eventually, or if I stick with this, this, uh, keyboard can be used on my studio. So it's, a, it's a, a win-win. I can use it for shows and I can use it in the studio as a MIDI keyboard or a regular piano, uh, you know, trigger for piano stuff. So it's a win-win. I feel that is, especially when I'm buying things, if, if I can get more than one reason or source out of buying something, if I can use it for multi-purpose, that's always a win for me too. So yeah, uh, again, I'm stoked for that guys. I, I cannot wait to show you. And so the porch fest, uh, I know I went a, a really long way on uh, talking about gear, but the porch fest uh, that I'm going to be playing at is going to be on September 21st. 
I'm playing at 2 p.m. And I'll, again, go to my website, hit me up on Facebook at spoken life music. And there'll be all the details there. And and there's going to be more details coming up uh, as the event gets closer. But uh, I plan to debut a little bit of this new setup there. So I'm um, looking forward to that. So September 21st media's first annual porch fest, uh, 2 PM. Uh, come say hi. I'll be doing about a one hour set. So, uh, I think there's a couple more things I wanted to try to say. Uh, you know, yeah, I guess I'll end it with this a little bit. So, again, wanted to give a little bit of, of a Delco update uh, for the Delco movie. And uh, I've been working on the background music for the scene that I'm in. Uh, I've been honored uh, that Chris, the director of the movie, uh, wanted uh, asked me asked me to you know, do the background music for our scene. So the little church band that I'm in for the scene, <coughs> uh, we all participated in getting this song made. And, you know, I'm waiting on a couple more things from the uh, band members. And uh, I'm just starting to mix everything down. Sounds great. And I really love how everything's turning out. So uh, there's no official release date on the delco movie yet i think filming has stopped and he's done filming he might just be doing some small b-side c-side whatever uh small things but i think the the main actors are done all their scenes i think he might just be probably doing some small extra scenes to fill out some some things for the movie again i'm not a director so i don't really know a lot of the lingo but uh, I just know from uh, keeping track on what he's been doing, I think the main characters are done all their scenes. So they took a wrap on all their scenes for the movie. Uh, from what Chris has told me, I think he's looking at a January 2025 release uh, for now. And looks like there might be some, uh, you know, watch along parties or like a red carpet event type of thing. And I, I think I might be involved in that. We're going to be talking a little bit more. I can't really say too much, but uh, I think me and the other one of the other band members might be doing some uh, live music for it, if so. So uh, we haven't got a lot of the details with that uh, going yet, because obviously there's no official release date. So once the release date gets set and I'm sure there will be more to come with that. So we'll be giving you more updates and, and uh you know, you can follow the Delco movie here. Uh, I'll give it a little description. And again, I'll have the, the clickable link in the descriptions below. So, uh, yeah, guys, I just wanted to come on on here. It's going to be a little short tonight. Uh, I wanted to come on here, just talk a little bit about my rig and, you know, just, you know, some dad moments that I wanted to share. And, you know, just some exciting moments that are happening on my end of my music uh journey and uh jim he's starting on uh his new year of uh classes and everything so he's doing his thing always killing it and uh you know we the boys will be back next week we'll be doing some stuff so i know i am right now talking to my future self i'm gonna be down the shore right now so i'll be doing my last hurrah of uh beach going for the summer so this will be my last hurrah for summer it, it the the summer weather and fall weather uh it, it's already starting to get really cold so summer is just you know now uh residing and fall is really creeping in now so i i can't the, for the first time, I can really say like I'm looking forward to fall. Uh, I don't know why, and uh, there's always a lot of people saying like you know the 50 to 70 degree weather is like prime, and you know there's something about it. And I guess it's maybe because uh, I like fishing when it's like that 60 to 70 degree weather in the morning, you know, because that always gets me a little bit more in the uh, aspect to start going fishing again. Because uh, especially in the summer, it's really hot. Uh, you know, especially for me fishing for trout, the uh, trout really don't respond too much and uh, or too too well in the 
warmer weather. So usually I'm uh, down at the shore fishing or fishing for uh, warm, more warm weather species like bass and bluegill and stuff. So, uh, yeah. So anybody else who is stoked for fall, leave a comment. And if you've gotten this far, give a thumbs up or give us the one, the one up. And, you know, if you guys are watching for the first time, uh, again, my name is Anthony Irvin, and uh, I'm usually here with my co-host and best friend, Jim Green. Uh, this is the One Set Podcast. You guys can check us out. Uh, we, we upload every Friday here on YouTube, Spotify, everywhere you can usually find your podcast. And make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell on YouTube to get notified every time we upload every Friday morning at 9 a.m. And if you want to catch us on socials, we are at, at One Set Pod on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And you can hit us up on our Gmail. Uh, feel free to send us some feedback on the show, uh, some ideas, uh, ideas, concerns anything you want uh any feedback we love hearing from you guys and we have merch up at our merch store on uh big cartel and we have a patreon which is uh free to sign up uh feel free to take advantage of that and once we get a couple uh you know patreons we're looking to start a you know a a feature of watch alongs for specific patreon uh, only members so we do a lot of watch alongs on this channel and we want to uh, eventually start doing something where it's patreon only so if you guys are uh, have seen watch alongs and you guys like that type of content where uh you know feel free to sign up for the patreon and you guys can uh get some featured watch alongs uh and it would most likely we're looking to try to make it live so you guys will be watching the uh shows or whatever we watch live in real time with us instead of it being pre-recorded so a lot of fun stuff uh so yeah just um give us a follow share with a friend and we will see you on the next one guys thanks it's been one set